Hey gents, nearly every company that I come across today in the direct to consumer space, all these online retailers, are highlighting the fact that they are eliminating the middleman. And this is not a new concept. Today I want to talk about how Facebook is the new middleman, how far back this middleman concept goes, and how the current environment is nearly identical to retail in the 1980s, which shaped modern retail. If I told you that Gap Inc. was the original direct-to-consumer brand, would you be surprised? Well, it's only partially true, but it could be Orvis, or it could be Sears, depending on your definition. This history is a little muddy, but stick with me. In the US, when we think of the original retailer today, we think of Sears Inc. You know, that store that your grandma can no longer buy tires at, but used to buy everything at? Sears peaked around 1992 with $59 billion in revenue. They were the king of retail, number six on the Fortune 500 list, which was above most oil companies, but they were shortly then overtaken by Walmart, which remains the largest retailer today. Sears innovated on the original retail model, which was to be a wholesaler. You could go to Sears to buy clothes from hundreds of brands. In 1927, they introduced house brands like Kenmore, Craftsman, later Die Hard Batteries. They even launched the Discover Card, Allstate Insurance, and Prodigy Internet. I know, right? That part of their business is considered vertically integrated retailing. They design, source, manufacture, produce, distribute, and sell the entire thing. So if it's Kenmore Refrigerators, or at one point they owned Land's End, and they were then making, designing, and selling the garments from the Land's End brand which means that there is no middleman. Orvis has a very similar story. To me, the catalog industry is its own video, but Orvis is one of the oldest retailers in the world that also offered their own design, manufactured, and sold goods. And if you ask me, they should be the modern bonobos because they have the supply chain to do it but I'll get to that. The middleman that modern brands are always talking about cutting out are the wholesalers, the Macy's, the JCPenney, the Nordstrom, Neiman, Saks, all those big companies that had a lot of stores and then sold a lot of brands through. Retailers like that will have a margin guarantee built in, which is where the middleman comes in. So let's take Macy's and Cole Haan, for example. If you buy a shoe for $100 in Macy's, about $40 of that goes to Macy's and $60 will go to the original brand. And that means that Cole Haan needs to make a shoe for about $25 so that it can make money. A shoe that is made for $25 sells for $100. Macy's gets a big cut of that. And if Macy's runs promotions, the brand is responsible for the discounts on there, which hurts the brand. Macy's is certainly providing value with the money that they're paying. They're given a platform for distribution. They're getting customer service through the retail employees and more exposure than the brand could ever imagine, which is why you see brands like Bonobos and Mizzen and Main going into Nordstrom stores. Brand today are trying to get legitimacy that just can't be bought online with Facebook ads, which is why you also see Warby Parker, Everlane, and all these other brands going into their own retail stores. And that's the perfect transition to talk about Facebook as a new middleman, but we missed a very pivotal era in retailing. So Gap started in 1969, but they didn't expand in earnest until the 1980s. J. Crew was technically found in 1947, but they didn't open their first retail store until 1989. Abercrombie and Fitch was founded in 1892, went bankrupt in 76, but then it boomed after it was sold to The Limited in 1988 as they were expanding Express, Victoria's Secret, Lane Bryant, and Bath and Body Works. That's gonna be its own video too. And remember, the 90s was a booming economy and these retailers rose to prominence as they copied the Sears model, which was to be a staple in suburban retail. So big malls, strip malls, these brands like Gap, Banana Republic, J. Crew, Abercrombie and Fitch, rose with the rise of suburban retail and they became household names. Each of these brands had the vertical model. They designed, produced, distributed, and sold merchandise on their own, so no middleman. But then one of the biggest expenses on the balance sheet of those brands becomes the real estate and the rents that they're paying in order to have those stores, which is just the cost of business for retailing at that time. So very old brands had to pay the middleman tax at department stores, which they got a lot of benefit from. Then there was an era of retail that they had to pay rents in order to have their physical stores and today if you want to grow a brand you are paying rent and you are acquiring customers through Facebook Instagram Google and other online advertising so now Facebook becomes the rent taker the rent that Facebook is charging today is much smaller than a traditional retailer was paying for rent but 
the increases are on the rise. As I talk to small brands that are acquiring customers online, now that the formula has been figured out by Facebook and there's increased competition because traditional brands are starting to figure out that they need to advertise over here, Facebook has jacked up prices by two to 400% in some cases, which is understandable. Facebook is always pressured to grow as a public company. The easiest way to do that is just to increase your prices. But as you see that Instagram is the sexiest part of the Facebook empire, I've already noticed that I'm starting to see ads for every three stories on Instagram. It used to be every 10. So now they're just increasing the real estate of ads, which once that goes, then they'll start to increase the prices again. So expect to see some changes in those platforms that we love so much. So that brings us to today. Catalog companies and vertically integrated brands eliminated the middleman a long time ago. The difference today is that small direct-to-consumer brands like Movement, Enverlane, Thursday Boots, Peter Manning, and hundreds of brands I try to cover on my channel are employing less people, selling more product with less overhead, and offering more value per dollar than traditional retailers as they try to keep up. Also see my long tail video where I talk about this new era of retailing and why there are so many brands. I'll also link to my J. Cruz Road to Bankruptcy video I did almost two years ago, which is looking pretty accurate as their quality decreases and their prices go down as they try to continue to capture as many sales. So let's admire the businesses that were built by J. Crew, Gap, and other retailers at the time because they succeeded in an era where they innovated using modern technologies to improve the customer experience over, at the time, it was Sears, JCPenney, Kmart, and other retailers that were even older, and all things in time are cyclical, the internet is allowing that to happen with direct-to-consumer brands today. 30 years is a good run for a retailer, and as I've shown on my channel, there are some incredible options for brands and retailers today. I love covering the disruption of the industry that we're going through right now, and all the plethora of options that are available to us guys. As always, love to hear your thoughts below on this video, Twitter and Instagram, love to hear from you guys over there. Until next time, gents, this is The Cavalier.